Hello, Sutonia here for Eva's Easy. This time I'm bringing you a Raptor guide. The Raptor got a big boost in the recent Oceanus expansion. Previously, the Raptor was really bad and it lost to all the other racial combat interceptors. However, it recently got some improved fittings and a slot adjustment, which has solved most of the problems that it had. And now it's worthy of a place alongside the Tyrannus Claw and the Crusader. So, the fit I'm using right now is a very similar fit to what you might see on a Merlin. I've got Neutron Blasters in the highs. This is mostly to take advantage of um, as much DPS as we can get. The Raptor only has 3.75 effective turrets. The Crusader has 5. The Tyrannus has 4.5 and 2 drones. And the Claw has 4.5 and a utility high slot. So we, we definitely want to get as much damage as possible. We also want the highest tier Blasters so that we can take as much advantage as possible from Null. The Raptor does get an optimal range bonus and... When we're fighting against other blaster ships or auto cannon ships, we want to use null and take advantage of our optimal range. And as you can see, we almost have 5km optimal range, which is fantastic for blasters, and we have 9km uh, fall off. The rest of the fit is micro warp drive, pretty um, self explanatory. We've got a mi uh, medium shield extender here, that's just to give us as much buffer as possible, and this ties in really nicely with the Raptors. Uh, 4% uh, shield resistance bonus per level. This is going to give us a really nice buffer. We then have a web, and we really want a web on the Raptor because it doesn't have an op uh, it doesn't have a tracking bonus, and this is really important to keep in mind. I see a lot of people trying to do double medium shield extender Raptors or some uh, uh, some other alternative fits that don't have a web, and I think a web is very important on the Raptor. I don't think dual prop is. Um, very appropriate on the Raptor. I think it's too hard to fit and uh, since you don't have a tracking bonus you can't really take advantage of the afterburner very well. I think the web stasis web fight is better. And then of course we have the scram. In the lows, uh, tech 2 mag stab. Again we want DPS. When we're, when we're solo, soloing in null sec we need as much DPS as possible to be able to kill, to kill ships before their friends or their fleet can come in. Need a uh, compact micro auxiliary power core to fit this, to fit the ship. And one one thing that's really interesting about the compact micro auxiliary power core is that it actually only uses thirteen, uh, sorry, twelve CPU. And this is really important. It actually this is actually another mo module that got buffed in the Oceanus expansion. And then um, I'm using a meta free damage control. Uh, you can go for an internal force field if you want the slightly better structure resist, but I don't think it's worth it. And the compact micro auxiliary power core is already going to set you back about 5 million ISK. So you can use the uh, more expensive damage control if you want, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it's um, value for money. You're then going to need a power grid rig for this to fit. On top of this uh, micro auxiliary power core, and then... Tech 2 small hybrid burst aerator, and that's again DPS. This whole fit is mostly designed about doing as much DPS as possible while also having a nice buffer and range control with scram and web and the web to take advantage of the Raptor's lack of tracking, bo tracking bonus. Uh, in the cargo, I um, I would really recommend you take a mobile depot and a small hull rep and a small armor rep. Make sure you pick up a small hull rep because they're actually four times smaller than the uh, Tech 1 hull rep for some reason. And of course you want to carry uh, Kardari Navy Antimatter, Void and Null and some repair paste. Now our tactics against different types of ships are that we want to use Null and kite against auto cannons and blasters, and we want to go in close against lasers and rockets and missile ships. It may it may vary depending on the on certain ships, but that's our basic game plan. And now I'll show you a few clips and some fights where we can talk about the Raptors' strengths and weaknesses. Okay, to start off with, I want to show you a fight against the Tristan. This fight isn't particularly um, very close or dangerous, but against the Tristan, what you want to do um, is to try and stay at range. Most Tristans normally have have blasters or they have um, newts, 
And you want to try and stay outside new or um, NOS range if you can. I don't do a particularly good job of this, but I make sure I'm on the edge. And since I have range control, since he only has a scram, what I can do is I can um, move outside of new or NOS range if he does have either of those modules. But anyway, I'm able to kill kill him um, fairly easily. This is a fight against a Tyrannus, and against a Tyrannus you obviously want to try and kite as much as possible using your null, since you get a uh, optimal range bonus and the Tyrannus doesn't. So what you want to do is start the fight as far as possible on the edge of scram range, and this Tyrannus actually has a web, and one thing that's important to keep in mind is that the Tyrannus and the Raptor have identical base speeds. So against a web Tyrannus, he will never be able to gain on you. So if you can control a Tyrannus, he will never be able to, to gain on you. And with proper range control, as you can see here, I don't even lose um, 200 shield HP in this fight. So this is a, a rematch with the same Tyrannus as before. And I don't do a particularly good job as I did as last time. But again, you want to try and start the fight on the edge of scrammage as possible. Um, like I said, a, a web Tyrannus doesn't ha it has exactly the same base speed as a Raptor does. So in theory, as long as you start the fight in a ideal um, location, he should never be able to gain on you. I did mess up quite quite a bit here, and I'm like 2.7 kilometers away from the Tyrannus. But he's still not in ideal range. As you can see, he's getting a lot of grazing hits on me. Only one of his guns is really getting a hit on me. I'm able to kill him, although it's a lot closer than the other fight because I wasn't as good at as range control. Okay, so after messing around a bit, I get another fight with the um, Tyrannus pilot, this time in the Jaguar. And I want to show you just how strong the Raptor is at just brawling. So against the Raptor, we want to try and kite as well as possible with Null. Um, I didn't do a particularly great job at this. Um, if I would have, uh, I should have um, kited him a bit further out. You want to be about seven to eight kilometers away from a Jaguar. The Jaguar does not get a application bonus. Well, it gets an optimal bonus, but that doesn't really matter at all for um, auto cannons. So this is actually a, a double MSA, MASB uh, Jaguar, and this is actually probably one of the strongest 1v1 uh, bait fits you can find against an interceptor. And you can see how low low I got him. Um, I could have whooped out there, but I got a bit greedy. And uh, I think this just shows how strong the Raptor is. I could have killed a Jaguar, which is an assault frigate in my interceptor, if I was um, piloting a bit better. Okay, so in this engagement, I'm sort of chilling on a gate. There's a few hostiles in the system, and uh, Thrasher comes in, so I warp off to a planet. And warping to a planet is a great way of baiting fights. I know I've mentioned this in a lot of other videos. But warping to a planet is going to split um, a lot of people up. I was kind of hoping the Saletta would follow me at zero. But the Thrasher ends up following me instead. But that's fine because I can take on a Thrasher in my Raptor. So normally the Thrasher is a really dangerous um, ship for frigates. Because it does a lot of DPS. What you want to do against a Thrasher is you want to stay outside newt range as much as possible. And you want to kite. You want to kite at 7.5 kilometers, in my opinion, so that you, you're still applying about 60-70% uh, of your DPS. But if he has a faction um, ammo loaded, he's only going to be doing about 20 or 30% of his DPS. And as you can see, um, despite this being a uh, Tech 2 um, fit thrasher, I'm able to kill him and take him down with my Raptor which is uh, normally most scram interceptors are at, at a disadvantage against a destroyer like the Thrasher. I was roaming through Brave Space and I found a mower and I noticed he had um, rail guns fitted so I went for him and started orbiting him. Uh, lucky for me he starts to cry in local for help and this is a, a really good situation to have because um, uh, and also, what, he could have gone back to the gate, but he chose to align to the sun instead, which is a bit strange. And he doesn't actually attack me. I was willing to warp out here because the Tengu came on um, came onto the gate, but it decided to not help the mower and just jumped out instead, which is great for me. 
I didn't see a Maldiction is coming in, so I prepared to fight the Maldiction. I load Null, and um, normally you'd just want to approach uh, a Maldiction and use Antimatter, but I decided to use Null because I'm sort of at a disadvantage here, and I was worried that he might be able to um, start the fight at a longer range distance. So this mower, this uh, Maldiction comes in to help the mower, and I'm able to start the fight with him. And in this situation, I just want to stay uh, in no optimal, but I don't want to hurt my own tracking. So I'm sort of trying to keep at range at sort of mid range, so that the Maldiction can't try and go underneath my tracking, but I can still um, apply my no DPS to him, and I'm still going to win the win the war against the Maldiction because I just have a nice buffer as well as more DPS than him. And I'm able to kill this Maldiction who's probably uh, very angry at the uh, mower. So I uh, continued my roam through catch. I was able to find the scumbag deserter mower again <laughs> and able to tackle and catch him again. This time he decides to engage me though and the Tenko and Imperial sl Navy Slice come in. I'm Tempted to go in on the slicer, but then a claw lands on the gate, so I decide to um, burn away. And since I'm not really in any danger, I decide to change my alignment and um, warp away to a planet that's obvious which planet I warp to, in hopes that either the claw or the slicer will follow me. So I sort of chill around here a bit, and the navy slicer is following following me. Now, navy slicer obviously wants to get as close as possible. And this is, uh, I wanted to include this fight because I wanted to show you how important the web on the Raptor is. So I don't get a tracking bonus, neither does the Imperial Navy Slicer, and we both have guns that are highest tier, so we're having tracking problems. And I'm orbiting this uh, Slicer at 1000 meters because my tracking, because I have blasters versus lasers, it is slightly better. But you can see I'm still missing the odd, the odd shot against him. And this is why you want the web, because the afterburner is not going to help you with your tracking while still mitigating um, his DPS, whereas the web is going to help you. Okay, so uh, dropping that Disrespect Depot right now, and I get a Tyrannus to burn for me off the station. But against the Tyrannus, what you want to do, um, as I explained before, is we want to um, kite them as long as possible to use our optimal range bonus to be to our advantage. And you want to uh, try and start the fight as uh, delay delay the fight as much as possible. Now this is not a web tyrannus, this is a dual prop tyrannus, which is a lot more dangerous to you because if he overheats afterburner, he will be able to gain on you. And also, if he overheats afterburner and orbit orbits you closely, he will be able to um, go under your tracking, which is very dangerous. So you want to try and um, start the fight as far away as possible. And, as, and uh, I'm very good at range control here. You can see the Tyrannus actually gaining on me about 300 meters per second. And it doesn't really help that I'm using keep at range, which is pretty bad. But I'm able to uh, get this Tyrannus down. He does get me to armor, actually, and he did have null loaded himself. And you can see just how close it, close it is between the Raptor and the Tyrannus, even when the Raptor plays very well. So I want to show you a fight against a dual prop Tyrannus and why it's dangerous to you. So I'm sitting on this gate and a Tyrannus comes through who's interested in fighting me. So I decide to engage him and he actually has a afterburner on straight away and he comes in. And I start the fight reasonably well but then he's just able to get on top of me because I wasn't really particularly flying that well. And you can see a Tyrannus will, um, with an afterburner, will be able to go almost as fast as you despite that, and you'll see I actually missed a, a hit there, and what he's doing is he's orbiting me at 500 meters with heated afterburner, and he was able to get under my tracking and wreck me with faction antimatter. And it's important to keep in mind, even though that you have a medium shield extender and a shield resistance bonus, you still can't out, out a Tyrannish, you need to use Null and Kai. Now finally, I want to show you a fight where I feel the Raptor really excels at with its um, extreme uh, brawling potential with the um, buffer and the damage that it has. 
So I get into a fight, there's two condors on this station, and there was also an executioner around too that warped, warped in at range. I'm able to get on top of this condor uh, as soon as I possibly can. And this condor actually has a scram, although it does have light missiles as well. Which is a bit of a, a weird combination, you could say, but it's probably just a, like a fleet tackle condor. And I end up getting into a fight with him, and he's holding me down. And you can see that an executioner warps in at range, and then it's going to come in and warp on top of me. Um, against an executioner, it's a laser ship, so you will want to use antimatter. I probably shouldn't have changed ammo here. It's probably not efficient to change, and he actually gets some range on me. Uh, against lasers, obviously, uh, you want to be able to use antimatter to do as much damage as possible and to negate their optimal range bonus over you. I'm able to pop the uh, executioner quickly, which is the most dangerous ship to me because he had conflagration and also uh, two heat, sink heat sinks on his ship, so he's doing a lot of damage to me. And finally, the uh, another condor comes in, the second the second condor. There's also a third condor as well that's sort of not really engaging. And he decides to warp out instead of fight me. You can see uh, where the shield buffer sort of really uh, shines here, in that being on takedown two condors and an executioner in my uh, raptor. Okay, so then in this final fight, I was hanging around in the same system where I got the fight with the condors again. And uh, there was an Onyx on the station, and he was actually present in that Tyrannus fight, although he didn't get in range, and I just was curious, so I looked at him and I uh, saw they had heavy assault missiles fitted on his onyx so I know that he's not really much of a danger to me if it had maybe uh, rapid lights it could be a dangerous but I saw I noticed a condor warp to the customs office so I decided to follow him and the onyx actually follows me as well but I know that he's not going to be much danger to me because he does have heavy uh, assault missile launchers I want to get this condor down as uh, fast as possible because he has a, a uh, scram and web but luckily I had antimatter loaded so it's really quick and another condor comes in and I, w I wasn't um, particularly keen to engage him at zero because I wasn't quite sure what sort of tackle the onyx had if it had like dual web or something it could maybe be dangerous to me but it seemed like it was just a standard fleet fit with hands for some reason so I burn away a bit just so the onyx can't really interfere too much although his damage to me is pretty much non-existent and then I just come back in slingshot onto this uh, condor here and I'm able to uh, bring this condor down. And these are just sort of the fights where I feel really feel like the uh, the raptor shines at. I am Sutonia. Thanks for watching my video. Take care, take care, guys, and I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with the raptor.